Hello friends, hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm doing an unscripted kind of a live edit, editing without a net, so to speak. I don't have a plan. I have not rehearsed this video or this edit, nor have I edited any other photos like this from this trip. I'm just back from a trip to Oregon. I took a bunch of photos that look like this out in the woods, just beautiful, beautiful, you know, a half second exposure kind of thing in the woods just to get a little bit of flow in the water. And what I want to do is just create something that I consider kind of fun, interesting, beautiful, maybe a little bit moody. I like to kind of create a little bit of mood, uh, but I thought it would be an interesting video because I don't really have a plan. And, um, you know, I sit here and I make videos and tutorials and it's always, here's what I do and here's how you do it. Um, but I don't always have a plan. And so the real gym and the real editing experience is often this. And so I like to share these unscripted edits at time because um, it just kind of shows you the thought process. So let's go ahead and get going. Now, um, I always start in develop raw. It is a raw file. So I'm going to come in here and give a little bit of smart contrast. The first thing I'm thinking about, of course, is the light. Actually, I think I'm going to lift the highlights a little bit because I like those uh, for lack of a better word, white caps. I know they're not really white caps, but the white parts in the stream. And I do want to create a little contrast between the light and the dark there. I'm going to check the shadows. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to do a tiny bit there, but not too much. And look at the temperature. And I actually, I'm going to go a little bit warmer. I normally go cooler with water, but it's pretty cool already. So I think I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to leave the vibrance the way it is. So really subtle. Uh, from that to that, and uh, you know, I'm ready to kind of get started. Uh, so I've done that, and I'm going to come into super contrast. And the first thing I'm usually thinking about when I'm editing a photo is the light. I, I'm, I kind of want to balance the light. That's kind of the first thing I think about. So I did some of that in develop, and then I generally go to super contrast. So usually what I do is I just kind of play with these sliders a little bit, and I'm going to move them all about to 20 or so. And then I'm going to take a look at the balance and see what that's doing for me. You see, when I go left with the balance, it's creating higher uh, or brighter uh, highlights, right? So I can increase this if I really want them to pop a bit more. But see, be careful because I'm starting to get blown out areas, which if you hit the J key, you can see that will light up the areas that are blown out in red and the parts that are absolute black, they're in blue. So I can leave that on and I can pull this back until I pull back some of that red. And actually, in the sky, I don't mind it. I just don't want it in the water. So I'm going to hit the J key to get rid of that. Uh, now I'm going to play with the balance on the midtones a little bit. And that helps a little bit, too, with some of that white, which I like. And then shadows, I'm going to go a little bit to the right, because I know that will bring down those shadows. The only thing is, I, just don't, I don't want to have too much shadow in the background. I mean, I want it darker, but I want some of that green to come through, because it's, it's kind of a rich, kind of vibrant green. So... I think I'm going to leave it like that. So super contrast took me from there to there, which is really not a whole lot, to be honest. So, um, okay, let's see here. Live edit, live edit. Oh, gosh, uh, I feel like I'm I, like um, on stage and everybody's just like sitting there waiting for me to figure out what I'm going to do, uh, which is actually exactly what's happening, I guess, if you're watching this video. Um, I'm going to go do what I did in this recent video, which is effectively a, a dodge and burn, let's call it. I'm going to click masking. Here's the thing. I'm not going to use mask AI because mask AI, I assume if I click water, it's going to pick all the water and I just want to hit the white cap. So I'm going to use a brush and I'm going to go low strength, like 20, 25, 24. And I'm going to come in here and get my brush. I'm just going to kind of paint a little bit in some of these wider areas. And all I'm going to do is just kind of paint a little bit, adjust my brush size, Paint a little bit, maybe a little bit there, maybe a little bit there. I recommend taking your time, which is difficult for me to do when I'm recording a video and I don't want it to be too long because everybody loses interest and all that. I just wanted to do a little bit of that. Let me get a little bit over here as well, a little bit there and there. Oh, I like this section. Um, and I'm, I want to create contrast, right? So that's basically taking the bright parts uh, and make them a little bit brighter. So let's pretend that's that's correct. I'd go a little bit slower if I was just doing this for myself. Uh, and I'm going to lift the exposure. So, you know, again, don't go too high. You don't want it to be an incredibly huge difference, although that doesn't look so bad, to be honest. But um, I want to lift it a little bit. So let me double click uh, to where it was. It was at zero, of course. Let me see what it looks like. I'm just going to go up a little bit, like that 0.85 or something. As you know, I can go back into the Edits tab and get this tool again if I want to go and adjust it further. But 
I think I'm okay with that. Maybe a tiny bit further, maybe closer to one. Let me just go to 1.0. Uh, I'm going to close develop. I'm going to open develop again because I want to do kind of the opposite, which is now come in with a brush. And once again, lower strength. And I want to come in here and I want to kind of paint in some of these areas on the rocks. And I want to paint in some of this water where it's kind of dark. And I'm going to darken that. So again, I'm creating contrast. I'm creating some visual interest in the photo, or I'm trying to. Uh, let's, uh, you know, we'll see. I don't know what it's going to look like. I haven't done this yet. So um, I'm going to darken that a little bit, maybe darken a little bit of that as well. Shrink my mouse. Whoops, not that small. Maybe a little bit darker here on this rock. Maybe a tad on that rock. And, and you notice I'm not going all the way to the back of the photo with all this. Uh, partly because it's in the distance and you don't pay as much of attention to it, but also because it's further away, the little, uh, I'm going to call them rivulets or whatever, there's not as much separation. It's just kind of like back there is the creek or the river, and up here is where you get the separation because I'm closer to it, and it's a wide-angle lens. I was kind of looking down from a rock, so I'm not messing with it back there because I think visually it doesn't have the same impact. In this case, I'm going to drop the exposure. So again, don't go too low. Because I don't, I don't want to go like make a huge difference, but actually something to think about here. Because I had the strength of the masking brush pretty low, it's not having as big of an impact as if I did full strength. If I did full strength and dropped the exposure negative five, it would be probably completely black. As it stands, I was at 20 or 25 or something, and I'm at negative five, and it doesn't really look that bad. But I'm going to start back at zero and just kind of lower it. And I think I'm just going to just do that. All I'm creating is just a little bit of uh, contrast there because I'm also going to close that. Let me take a look at the photo now. So if you look at the river, I mean, it was a bit flatter and now it's popping a bit more and those white caps are popping. But another thing you can do is just come back and do a little bit more smart contrast across the entire photo. And, you know, contrast, of course, is the difference between the bright parts and the dark parts. And that's what I'm creating is some contrast. I think that looks pretty good, to be honest. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit higher with the highlights. So I don't really have to mask it because these are just the highlights. And I'm going to slightly drop the shadow. So i got to back up a little bit, get away from the mic. Sorry, I just want to take a look and kind of get my eyeballs on this thing. Yeah, I think that looks good. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mask that in with a linear gradient. And I'm just going to mask that into the bottom of the photo. So in other words, it's not impacting the trees. So they didn't get darker. Uh, so if I go back over here and show you that before and after, there we go, uh, before and after. And I actually think I'm going to pull that back just a little bit. And, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more in the highlights. Uh, something about like that. So before and after, just impacting the foreground. I think that looks good. Now, what I want to do is go play with like the background a little bit. So I'm going to try, uh, you know what? Actually, one thing, not mood, um, um, uh, 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 atmosphere. That's what it was. I was like, where's the fog tool? I want to try a little bit of fog to see how this looks in this photo. Yeah, I don't really like fog. Let me try layered fog because it's that thinner strip and it's usually kind of, uh, that's not really working for me either. Uh, how about mist? <laughs> how about a mist? We'll try the mist. Uh, yeah, I don't really like that either. And haze. Uh, I don't think I like haze either. Not really doing anything for me. So you know what? Never mind on atmosphere. I'm going to blow that off. Um, I am going to try glow. So um, instead of soft focus, I'm going to try a little bit of glow. And let me see what that does. It, it's definitely hitting the highlights in the sky and a little bit in the water. So it's creating a little bit of that, um, that contrast, which I kind of like. So I think I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to try mystical as well, because that also has an impact on these kind of things. And as you can see there, that creates really a lot of contrast. I don't want to make it like a over the top, really highly edited look. So I think maybe just a tiny bit of mystical. So I think what I want to do now is a little bit in the background. So I'm going to go into develop and I'm going to get a mask and I'm going to get a radial gradient. And I'm going to draw that right up here. But of course, I want to invert it because I don't want to work inside that, not outside of it. And what I want to do is create a little bit of a, a pop of light, but I want to make it kind of big and kind of diffuse, so like a big gradient, for lack of a better word, and see about maybe about something like that. I'm, I'm not sure how this is going to look, but I'm going to go to adjustments, and what I want to do is lift the exposure a bit. 
And you can kind of see how that's popping that light. I'm going to cool it off as well. So I don't really want it to be like, um, like a hard sunlight. It's not a sunset kind of look that I'm going for. I think I'm going to reduce the contrast. So that creates a little bit hazier kind of look and maybe lift the shadows as well. And so let me see how that looks. If you look at the before, it's just kind of flat back there. And now I feel like I've got a pop of light coming in and I think that kind of works. So that's a fun little trick with a radial mask. And I talked about that in that recent video where you can kind of do that to control the light and kind of shape it a little bit. And now that I've done that, I think what I want to do is come in over to this area with some of the greens and, um, I'm going to try a radial mask here as well. So something about like that uh, inverted and I need to stretch this out big time and reposition it a little bit. Stretch and stretch. And I'm going to pull in that gradient a little bit, maybe more like that. And for this color adjustment, I want to give it a little bit more saturation and I want to get the luminance of that green. I want to lift that a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit more vibrant. And if I go into the green saturation, maybe give that a little bit more as well. You can see how it's getting a bit more green over there. Um, I like that green in the background and I don't want to lose it. And it was kind of dark. So there it is before and there it is now. And I actually think what I might do is go in and slightly brighten that area. And I think I'm just going to do the same thing, which is just another radial gradient. I should have just been copying uh, that, but Anyway, live and learn, my friends. Um, I'm going to stretch this out. Similar kind of thing. Uh, in fact, maybe it's better. I don't have the exact same mask because uh, this one, I think it's better if I have a broader range of kind of diffusion, that gradient itself. So I'm going to go to adjustments, slightly lift that exposure, something about like that. And that brings that green back. And yeah, it's definitely better that I did a different radial here because that kept it from, uh, that allowed me to kind of blend it, I think, better with what was happening on that other side. So uh, now that I've done all that, let me look at the photo, the before and after. There's my before. You know, it's, it was a nice scene. It was absolutely beautiful. It's incredibly peaceful. I was out there by myself. I didn't see anybody else uh, the whole time. So like there it is before. There it is now. I feel like I've got a pretty decent looking image. I like it's a vibrant uh, background and often photos like this, I'll often kind of fade the background a bit, but I kind of like it. I like how it popped that light in that corner how I got kind of the greens going a little bit and how I've got the, the white caps and that sort of thing, creating a little bit of a moody foreground. But I think, I think it works. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. I like the photo, but you know, as soon as I stop recording, I'll think of like 17 things that I should have done and included in this video. You know, I think it's a pretty good edit. It's not amazing, uh, but more than anything, I, I just like to do these unscripted edits because it's a chance for me to kind of share my thought process, show you what I'm thinking about. It's kind of hard to do simply because um, I'm winging it, for lack of a better word, and I'm trying not to waste your time by making the video too long, and it's already pretty kind of long, uh, I think. So um, there's my edit one more time before and current state, and I uh, hope it helps, my friends, just to give you some insight into how I'm thinking about editing certain kinds of photos, and in certain ways, that's an edit. That may not be the final edit, but that's an edit, and that's how I think about it. Hope it helps. Thanks for watching, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, Check out that playlist about Luminar Neo. I got so many videos about Luminar Neo and plenty more coming. So thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you soon. And until then, my friends, adios.